This is Twit. Recall is finally coming out uh, with a release preview. I can't, you know, they announced this when? Ages ago. That, that, uh, that first announcement didn't go too well. They announced it in, uh, I think it was uh, almost a year ago. Uh, people said, what? You're, what? That's a security nightmare. They mm-hmm. backpedaled and then, you know, they said, well, we're going to delay it. They, they restated the security goals. Some have said that they, I think Paul Therat has said, this is what they had originally said, but they weren't, so were so unclear about it that people thought it was really a security nightmare. Um, well, finally, they, they had planned to launch in October. That got pushed back. Now they're going to uh, put it out for the insiders in the release preview channel, according to a blog post on uh, Thursday. Uh, how do you feel about uh, Recall? I like the idea of it if it's local. Yeah. But see, to me, if it's, it's most useful if it's not local, if it's on every device you have. Right? Who cares True, if this one computer knows what you did? That's why I carry this thing around. <laughs> yeah. The little AI device I've showed it many times is called a B that is recording all the time and then makes summaries and notes for me at the end of the day. Ideally, an AI should have every bit of information. But can yeah, you do well, that I mean, I'm, I'm talking safely? like, you know, by, by local, I mean private to you know within your own sphere of devices not just microsoft right. has all yeah, that you, you want it on multiple i mean we all use multiple devices and you want it to right. be able to well, access, recall as it stands is only on that one yeah. computer right it does not right. cross device lines and i think that it's safe to say it is private although security Ish. experts worry that it is you know a treasure trove for hackers if they could get in correct yeah, that's the, the the better the AI makes things for you to find your own stuff more easily and index all of your own things, the right. also better if somebody gets in that's not supposed to be in, they could just easily find all your stuff. Robert, are you slathering uh, at, <laughs> at the chops? I, I am not. Uh, we are currently planning our Windows migration strategy because we've got a large chunk of the organization that does not want to go to 11. So, when so ends, what are you going to migrate yeah. to? Uh, so we've already started switching off some of the most critical infrastructure uh, to, uh, to to Linux. We do not want to wow. go to Apple. Wow. Uh, we There's a couple of services that are st- stubborn. We don't have good analogs yet. Uh, but And it's not about recall. I, actually, I, I find the feature interesting. It is an interesting set of, uh, of functionalities that get added to Windows. But we've been so put off by the Windows 11 experience, especially yeah. at the enterprise level. That we just and we don't see ourselves. Come before. October, Microsoft uh, says Windows 10 yep. users will no longer get support. You've got to go to Windows 11. They'll expand. They'll extend that. They will they have absolutely to. extend that. Yeah, they have yeah. in the past. It's still. I think it's still greater than 80 percent right. of everything. I'm still, it's actually 10. it's increased. It, yeah. Windows 10 has increased <laughs> yeah, from the last true. metric. So people are getting really upset with with a lot. And part of it is just they don't want to be force fed a lot of changes that they didn't ask for. And it seems like with every release, 11 adds something. You're like, why did you do that? Or why did you take that away? This functionality, that's that's just silly. So recall would actually be one of the reasons I would stay just to see how it works. It is an interesting idea. I'm with Alan. I've got a lot of privacy concerns, especially with you centralizing my data and allowing an AI to prioritize what is important. Right. But uh, I mean, it, it's it, for me, operating systems are now like TVs. I'm so done with smart TVs. Give me something that's solid, that works, that is stable, that is secure. And I'm, I'll be happy with that OS for the next 20 years. Yeah, this but is, then how uh, are they going to make money off you in perpetuity? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is what Microsoft says in the release notes. To use recall, you'll need to opt in. That's good. It, originally, yeah. it was opt out. You'll need to right. opt in to saving snapshots, which are images of your activity. The AIs, and they use various AIs to analyze those snapshots to, mm-hmm. to extract the information <laughs> from them. Uh, you'll also have to enroll in Windows Hello to confirm your presence and that's for security, so that only you can access those snapshots. 
Microsoft says you're always in control of what snapshots are saved and can pause saving snapshots at any time. As you use your Copilot Plus PC throughout the day, working on documents or presentations, taking video calls and contexts, switching across activities, recall will take regular snapshots and help you find things faster and easier. There was concern about it taking snapshots of your credit cards. Uh, I don't, you know, in theory, I think they say, oh, we're not going to do that. But um, how will they know without looking at it <laughs> if they're going to take a picture of it? It, it just seems <laughs> it just seems wasteful to me generally because they're talking about saving a bunch of screenshots. But that's the most like low tech yeah. way to yeah. do it. Like, I mean, you have. If you want to know where you went on your browser, you can Chrome has Look your at the Chrome browser has the history yeah. of all yeah. the URLs you went to. It's all just you can distill what would be, you know, potentially terabytes worth of screenshots into just like a few kilobytes worth of just well, metadata. I think that's the theory. I don't do they preserve the screenshot? I don't know. Or after they analyze it, I think that I don't I would know. hope I would hope that it you know ingests the screenshot and then just takes what it needs from it and the then just, it just goes away because otherwise it's just going to be a space hog i i do remember them uh talking about the storage used and it and it wasn't vast okay but um i can't remember the exact details you do have to have a copilot plus pc uh which is the new standard for pcs uh at least 40 tops in the uh in the um neural processing unit 16 gigs of ram eight logical processors uh to use recall you'll need at least 50 gigs of storage space free okay I mean, that's saving right. snapshots automatically pauses once the device has less than 25 gigs left uh you have to use bitlocker or device encryption obviously to, to protect yourself and you have to enroll in windows hello as i mentioned to verify your identity uh, it's interesting well i'm very curious we shall we shall see you know, we one, one of the things that was drilled into me from the time that I, I started was having good archiving processes. So I'm, over the last 30 years, I have a set of descriptors that I put on every file and project that I ever create. That's smart. So it makes it possible That's for me to go back by date or topic. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's disciplined. So basically, Recall says, no, don't do that. I'll do that for you. Right. So if, but, if you haven't done what I've done, then Recall could be very That's useful. the same thing here. In fact, even though AI is yet to be useful enough so that the stuff captured by this B uh, is super useful to me. It is capturing and saving all the time. And I'm hoping as years go by, I will now have a kind of a database of things that I've said and done and agreed to and other people have told me and so forth. It's recording my piano lessons. It's recording shows. It's recording everything. Uh, I'm hoping it, that that will become more and more useful down the road. It's kind of an investment in the future. Is that is it saving all of that to bees servers or oh yeah to, it's, uh, to your it's ex own exfiltrating this <laughs> okay <laughs> so we I interviewed all of his the, most the founders conversations on, on our shows intelligent the machines so what it does is it, this is a really just a microphone which sends to the iPhone which does send it to an unnamed he said the the founder said it's some commercial AIs and some of our own. So he wouldn't say which AIs they use, and I think it's probably moving around quite a bit. Sends it out to them, deletes the, the recording, though, okay? So the recording is deleted after it's analyzed. Yeah, so it just transcribes and saves. Transcribes yeah. and then extracts. So I, I do have transcriptions of the most recent conversations that I can identify speakers, but not of the past. I the don't thing, know. The, the thing that I'm kind of waiting for... Nightmare. Like, like I'm a digital pack rat, much like Padre is. I've tried to be mm -hmm. as good as I can within reason and within like, you know, not to go too crazy to where it's diminishing returns, but I try to somewhat organize things, but I'm kind of holding out for the local AI, for the models you can run on your own hardware to get good enough to where you basically have, you know, the movie her available locally. That's what I want. Right. And you yeah. can just, hey, go through all my stuff. Exactly. I need you to organize all these things, figure out, well, you know, index everything so that if I just want to ask, hey, where's that picture when I was, you know, in the Twit studio that I had? Show me all those pictures. Yeah, we've been doing that today. Right. People have been pulling up, uh, you know, old images. I would like to say, where was I on December 20th, 2012? I'd love to right. be able to ask that. It's almost like a diary of your site. It also keeps track of your agreements. So I have a to-do list that generates a proposed to-do list which you can then say yeah yeah keep that one no no, no i'm not gonna do that and and so it's really nice to, to 
keep track of your agreements. I like the idea. Anyway, I think right. recall is a good idea. I understand the security concerns. This is the yeah, problem. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, I've been doing you know somewhat low tech version of the AI thing just out of necessity. You know, even though it's not actually AI, but you know, I try to make sure all the pictures or the file names are actually like the date and time of the picture, for example. And yeah, things might be right. sort of sorted into folders loosely, but. I mean, there are some tools you don't necessarily have to have AI to have really good ability to find all your stuff. Like there's a well, there's I, a tool called Void Tools is the company that, or not company, but the guy has a thing called Void Tools. There's, there's a thing just called Search Everything. Right. Right. And it's just a program. It indexes all your stuff, even if it's on a remote like it's network It's long storage. been the dream of technology. I mean, you've got all this stuff digitally. You yeah. should be able to do that. Right. Where I would use it is if you had something that was smart enough to go through the literally tens of thousands of hours of footage I have and there can you write go. me meta descriptors of there conversations and scenes. That's that's where I actually could use help. I can yeah. beat you uh, on that. You want to hear some twit stats that have been compiled? Oh, oh boy. Oh, no. <laughs> by our we go. Um, esteemed team. Oh there have been 1,030 episodes, obviously. Um, the first episode where any video exists is number 24. The longest episode, <laughs> which was from 2018, episode 699, it was a best of those. So this doesn't count. Ah, okay. Almost four hours, three hours, 56 minutes. The longest non-best of was from um, 2022. It was called The Whole Internet Burrito. And it was three hours, 36 minutes. We might beat that today. I don't know. <laughs> the shortest episode... Introducing iPac, is that the Compaq iPac? It was 2006, it was before the iPhone. Oh my Might gosh. Be. That sounds about the right, that PDA, sounds about the right yeah. time frame. Yeah. IPAQ, yeah. it was yeah. 24 minutes long. Average episode length, it's been getting longer, but if you include the older ones, two hours, three minutes. If you wanted to listen to every episode of Twit, it would take you 88 days, nine hours, 31 minutes and 59 seconds. <laughs> with no so, sleep. With no sleep. <laughs> constantly listen not hear or hear not listen whatever i smell you, a challenge you don't have to process it um so anyway it's been a long and a crazy trip and a lot of fun and i really thank all of the people who've been part of this you'll see as i said a scroll of all the people who've ever been on to it as contributors i couldn't i wish i could i tried we don't have a record of everybody who's ever been a on the staff there's so many people that i would love to thank people like as i mentioned colleen kelly our first studio manager john slanina our last studio manager burke mcquinn has been with us almost since the beginning of course my wife lisa who's been the ceo and our executive producer since 2015 um there's so much i don't want to leave people out there's so many great people so many editors uh, of course, our current team is wonderful. There is a crawl, crawl at the end of the show where you can see the current people. I just couldn't get all the names of the people who have, uh, have worked at Twit, but there have been so many, and I thank you. Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, The News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button. And uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.